Okay, today we're going to look at some calculus problems and we're going to use the DI method, uh, also known as the uh, row integral by parts or some people just simply call RIP, RIP. So here is our first problem. We're going to take the antiderivative of x squared times ln of x dx. So first of all, we know that we have uh, the general expressions of the antiderivative of x to the n power. We also know, uh, uh, we also know that, uh, well, we actually don't know what's the, uh, the antiderivative of ln of x. So, well, if, even if you don't know, pretend you don't know yet, okay? So let's see how we're going to do this problem. Well, this is what the integral, um, integral by part or the DI method said. So we can call it D, um, means that we're going to take the derivative. And then I means that we're going to take the integral of it. So how are we going to pair it for this problem? We know that we don't have the antiderivative or the integral of ln of x, the natural log. But we definitely do know the derivative of ln of x. So we're going to start off with ln of x in the d column and then for the rest the x, uh, x squared we're going to put it in the i column meaning that later on we're going to take the derivative of ln of x and then for the x squared part we're going to take the integral so at this moment we have the positive sign in front good so in this method we're going to alternate the sign every step. So the next step will turn into negative and the derivative of ln of x is one over x. And for the x squared part, we're going to take the integral of it, which is one third times x to third power. And don't forget, uh, well, at most of the time, the teacher will tell you, don't forget the C when you write the, your answer but right now we're not done with it so don't worry about it so what does that mean it means that now we are going to figure out what we get we are going to take this route to end up with one third x cubed times ln of x and then we're going to take this part here that is in the integral and it means that we're not done yet. We have negative or minus the integral of the products right here. So we have one third times x to the third power times one over x, which is x to the negative first power. So we have three minus one in the power, which is two. So we end up with one third times x squared dx. So now we are uh, finally have a form that we know how to integrate. One third is a constant, we can pull it out. The integral of x squared is again just another copy of one third times x to the third power. This time we're finally done with all the integration. Don't forget we still need to put a plus c at the end. So if we simplify it, we will get one over three times x cubed and x minus one over nine x cubed plus c that's it let's move on to the second problem okay here's our second problem we're going to take the antiderivative of x squared times cosine of x dx of course so this time what can we do well it's very hard to tell what we can do right now because again we know that uh, we know the derivative and the integral of both x squared and cosine of x, right? But now we need to ask ourselves, okay, which one will be easier or would be beneficial if we're going to take the derivative? Let's take a look at this part first. Cosine of x. If we take the derivative, we have negative sine of x, and then take the derivative again, we have negative cosine of x. Take the derivative again, we have sine of x. And take another derivative, we have cosine of x. So we see that if we take the derivative of the cosine part, 
it will never end. We will always get a loop back. However, if we try to take the derivative of x squared, we see that we will end up with 2x, 2, 0. Meaning each time when we take a step for the x squared part, we can actually reduce that expression into lower degree and then eventually it will turn down into a constant or even down to zero. So this is exactly what we want to do so that we can, when we combine with the other parts, it will, get, uh, it will get something nicer or easier to simplify or to know how to do. So this time we're going to put x squared in the d part and then cosine x into the i part. So how do we do it? Again, we'll just follow it. First step, we're going to flip the sign and then take the derivative of this. We end up with 2x here and then take the integral of the i, col uh, I column, we have sine of x. And if we now take the product, we still end up with 2x times sine of x, which is not something that's very nice yet, and we don't have um, the integral of it, if you don't remember. But we on pretend that you on we only know the uh, integral of sine and cosine, okay? But not multiplying with x to some power. So what should we do? Take another step. Now we're going to flip the sign again and turn it back into positive. So 2x will become 2 as we take another derivative where the integral of sine of x is negative cosine of x. Good. So do we need to take another step? Actually, not, and, uh, not necessary anymore because even if we take the product here, we end up with negative 2 cosine of x and we know how to take the integral of it. But some people or some professors will just ask you to take one more step. So that now, if we take the derivative of 2, we end up with 0 here. And then take the integral of here, we will end up with negative sine of x. So that now, it will be even nicer because if we take the product, we end up with 0. So the integral of that is just some constant c. Then we can finalize our work. So again, how do we do it? Take this row and then multiply with the mm, mm, multiply with the next i like this. And then finally here we also need to do this, which is unnecessary. We we'll, uh, as we explained that. This part is just giving us some constant. So we can, in fact, ignore the last, uh, the last row here. So we just get x squared times sine of x, which is the first, and then, time, uh, and then minus 2x times this part. So we end up with double negative, which is positive. So we have plus 2x cosine of x. And then we're taking the third part, uh, yeah, the third row, which is plus 2 times negative. So we end up with minus 2 times sine of x. And don't forget, the last row is telling us that we will end up with some arbitrary constant, it's capital C. Good. So let's take a look at another example. And we will end the video after that. Okay, here is our last example. So this time we have the cube of the expression xn of x dx, and we need to find out the antiderivative of it. So perhaps some of you already know what is the integral of xn of x. However, we cannot really do it at here because don't forget we actually need to do a chain rule if we do so. But then there's nothing else we can actually uh, combine with the dx and then give us a very nice form. So first, let's break it out. We have the integral of x cubed times. Now, I know most people will actually hate this symbol, but I'm still going to use it. Ln x, uh, ln of x to the third power. Well, in this case, we mean, uh, it means that we have three copies of ln of x. 
maybe I should do it. I'll just put it like this then. And then dx. Good. So once again, what do we need to do? The di method. But what should we do this time? Or what should we put in the d row, uh, d column? And then what should we put in the x, uh, well, in the i column? First of all, we know that how to, uh, we know how to take the derivative and the integral of x to the n power because that's just uh, uh, a power function. We know how to do it. Uh, we, don't we know how to deal with it. For the other part, we have ln of x inside. Well, if we know how to do the derivative, except again, it's not simply x. So we need to use the chain rule as we take the derivative of it. But what's worse, we don't know the integral of it at all. So it means that we have no options, but we have to put the ln of x to the third power, oh, well, everything into the third power into our d, uh, in the d column. So this is what we're going to get. And then of course, for the i column, we have to put everything else, x cubed. Then let's do it. First step, we flip the sign and then take the derivative of this and then the integral of this. Integral of x cubed is just one over four times x to the fourth power, nice. What's the derivative of that? Well, let's do the scratch work down here. If we're going to take the derivative, we're going to first pull out the power and then drop the exponents by one. So we have three minus one, which is squared. And last but not least, don't forget the chain rule. We need to take the derivative of the expression inside of the parentheses. Uh, so that will be the derivative of n of x, which is one over x. So we get this expression here. And then over one over x. Let me write that again. Three times ln of x squared times one over x, like this. So should we continue from here? Well, let's see. If we continue here, we have two parts in our derivative. And if we take the derivative of that, we will actually end up with more and more in our expression, which is actually getting more chaotic. So what should we do? Well, let's take a look. If we look at our expression here, one over x, if we, uh, we are, if we look at this expression here, the one over x, we can actually combine back with the integral part. Why? Because remember, we say that the di method is followed from uh, the, yeah, the integral version of uh, the, um, the, product, uh, the product rule. So in other words, well, let's write down what we have. We have the product right here, which is pl uh, pl yeah, positive uh, ln of x to the third power times one over four times uh, x to the fourth power. So we have this expression. And then we're going to multiply with this row here, minus <clears throat> uh, Let's see, we're going to take the products right here. Three times ln of x squared times one over four, no, times one over x times one over four times x to the fourth power. So if we combine together, we have one over four times x to the four minus one power, which is four to the third power. So let me pull out the constant term. three over four here, 
and then we will just put these two together like this so what makes it good we notice that in solve having three uh, the third power for the ln of x term we now drop it down to a uh, second power in the uh in the ln of x term even though we didn't really change the x to the third power yet here we already reduced the, the degree so that now if we keep going we can reduce it down uh, reduce down the degree into zero eventually if we use the di method so what can we do we are going to use the di method again but this time Instead of continuing from here, we're going to start over. So let me use the black pen here. So if we start over, we have a negative here. So let's still put the negative here to help us. Uh, and then again, now our new D, uh, D parts will be ln of x squared. And then for the i part, we have the x cube so that if we do it again we will get uh let's see it's a little bit long here we will now get here is one over four times x to the fourth power and then the derivative of ln of x squared is just two times ln of x times the by the chain rule, the derivative of n of x is 1 over x. Good. So, now, we can, uh, we can just plug it in again. So, we have, let me change it back to positive sign. So, we have negative ln of x squared times 1 over 4. Uh, times x to the fourth power and then we have a plus sign here times the integral of the products right here so we have integral of 2 ln of x times 1 over x times 1 over 4 times x to the fourth power again dx like this so if we simplify this part we will then get um, let's see we pull out uh, we multiply with the negative so we end up uh, multiply the 1 over 4 here so we end up with negative 3 over 16 times x to the 4th power ln of x squared and then plus the integral of here so take out the constant terms which is 2 times 1 over 4, which is 1 half, multiply with the front. We have 3 over 8 times the integral of, again, 1 over x times x to the 4th power will give us x to the 3rd power, and then times ln of x, dx. Great. So we can just do it one more time so that we will end up with the former expression 1 over 4 times x to the 4th power times ln of x cubed minus third, no, 3 over 16 times x to the 4th power times ln of x squared plus 3 over 8 times let's see we will get 1 over 4 times x to the fourth power times ln of x and then we're going to minus the integral of 1 over 4 times x to the fourth power times now we just have the derivative of ln of x which is 1 over x dx and this part we can just combine it into x to the third power So that we can finally get our result. 
third power minus three uh, over 16 x to the fourth power times ln of x squared plus 3 over 32 x to the fourth power ln of x and then minus this is going to give us another one quarter so we end up with 1 over 16 3 over 16 times 8 is 128 x to the fourth power and then a plus c the constant that's it if you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to find out more of my other videos and also turn on the notification so that you won't miss any of my new videos later on also if you have any thoughts or um, questions you can just leave your comments below i'll see you guys in the next video